Just over a week until the new president is inaugurated, we'll take a look at a local power couple about that big event. From the newsrooms of Bay News 9 and the St. Petersburg Times, welcome to Political Connections. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Al Rochelle, as always, joined today by St. Petersburg Times political editor Adam Smith, who will introduce our guest. Hi, Adam. How are you doing? I'm doing great. We are joined uh, this week by Ramsey and Judith Ann McLaughlin. Ramsey is the newly elected Democratic Party chairman for Pinellas County. Uh, Judith Ann is a political scientist at the University of uh, South Florida, St. Petersburg. Thanks for being here. Thank you. you guys are going to be among the huddled masses at the inauguration. <laughs> yes. Uh, give us a sense. how You've done this before. How is this going to be different? Um, I have uh, attended uh, both the Clinton inaugurations in uh, 93 and 97. I think this is going to be uh, probably even larger crowds than we saw in 93. Um, I think there are a lot of people who, um, much like we saw in the campaign, who haven't been politically active before, who see this as such a historic event, uh, much more than a political event, and will be coming not only with uh, by themselves, but in many cases will be bringing their families with them. Now, the, the reality of it is, as glamorous as it may seem, that day of the inauguration, you guys have got to be in place, what, by 9 o'clock or something like that? They do the sweep, 9 to, to almost 12.30 or 1, one bathroom per 6,000 people? How much fun is this going to be? <laughs> Well, we're still waiting to hear back from our congressman about whether we have the tickets to the actual uh, inaugural ceremony at the Capitol, but uh, it is going to be, I mean, my memories of it in the past uh, is that it's frigid, you know, bitter cold, and you do stand there for hours, but this time it will be significantly different because you, you have to get there even earlier than that, plus you can't have a backpack or a bottle of water for all those hours, and there's certainly no strollers. A lot of um, families have been very critical of how unkid friendly it is. I mean, they really suggest you don't bring any children, and they're shutting down metro stops near it, so they're um, advising folks, if you're within two miles, you should just walk the whole way, but even if you're not, you're going to, streets are closed off, the bridges are closed off to anything but tour buses, so it's, it's yeah. definitely going to be very different this time as far as the, the logistics of actually being there, but they have for the first time opened up the full length of the mall all the way back to the monument, and um, maybe a million more people could be back there watching it on the big screen um, jumbotrons if they don't get one of the 250,000 tickets to be up close. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about Pinellas politics. You're, you're doing the job. Pinellas went for Obama, which was, I think was pretty well expected, mm -hmm. fairly comfortably, and yet down ticket uh, Democrats didn't do especially well. Republicans won pretty consistently on local races. What's the dynamic? Is Pinellas a blue county or a red county? Uh, I would say Pinellas is definitely in, in what is being called now the purple. Um, it is uh, fairly evenly divided between Republicans, Democrats, and undeclared or no party affiliation voters. And really, that's where the swing voters are now. Um, and uh, President-elect Obama was very successful in reaching out and getting his message out to those unaffiliated voters. And quite frankly, um, some of our Democrats, uh, either because of resources or other reasons, weren't able to get their message out to those unaffiliated voters. Democrats voted pretty well down ballot to uh, from President-elect Obama all the way down, supported the Democratic candidates, but because we didn't have the kind of resources that many of the Republicans and many of the Republicans have been incumbents, and so the undecided or undeclared voters tend to um, stay with the incumbents unless there's a real reason to change. And I think in many of the county races, they didn't, um, the voters didn't see a real need to change. So that's one of the things we need to do a better so job So what at. do you do, and Judith, and what do you think Karen Thurman, the state party chairman, does to capitalize on the extraordinary grassroots operation Obama had? Is that, I mean, how do, you, how do you extend that beyond support for Obama to other Democrats? Well, we have seen hundreds of new people uh, joining uh, the Democratic Party, uh, joining Democratic clubs, being involved. There are some actually new Democratic clubs being formed in parts of the county that really haven't had much. So there's going to be much <coughs> of a grassroots operation that, that is going to be... Uh, greatly enhanced in 2010 versus, say, 2006. 
but it's still important that we get that message out to um, undecided, undeclared voters. And we'll have a better operation, more uh, boots on the ground, if you will, to, to help get that message out. And it's really keeping those people energized that's going to be uh, important. Do you think it is a danger of, of, of these uh, independents and stuff becoming fickle very easy? Because the, the bottom line is, and Barack has been very obviously uh, open about this, it is going to be some time before we stop seeing triple-digit trillion-dollar deficits for as far as the eye can see. Well, I think on the presidential level, there were a lot of people, uh, quite frankly, across all parties, even among Republicans, who said, you know, we need some pretty serious change of direction from right. what's been happening in Washington. But the reality is now that Democrats have the White House, they have Congress, they have the majority, uh, really working majorities in both the House and the Senate, and the American people are going to expect some positive change. Um, which I think, rightly so, when you when a party gets in power, mm -hmm. that the voters will ultimately hold you accountable. If you're able to get things accomplished, then they will reward you by reelecting you. If you don't, then at some point the people will look for a change. And that's one of the things that I think we're going to see in the state of Florida is the Republicans control Tallahassee pretty well, mm -hmm. and voters are starting to get tired of hearing the we're going to address issues that aren't being addressed and and that same kind of advantage slash disadvantage democrats have in washington the republicans have in tallahassee and if you're in the majority and you've been elected people want to see some results mm -hmm. judith ann looking ahead we got a couple we got a gubernatorial race and we have now a wide open senate race jeb bush is out there's a perception that charlie christ is unbeatable uh, give me your your assessment of both these races um, well, I, I think you're right uh, that Governor Christ is, continues to be very popular um, and uh, trying to be above the fray and uh, try to come up with um, solutions to issues. So I think, you know, we'll see which Democrats decide to throw their hat in the ring in that race because um, I'm not sure he, I would say unbeatable, but very strong likelihood that he would be reelected. So I think. The the state being in a financial mess. I mean, it's pretty remarkable. It is, it's really remarkable um, that that he is still maintaining that popularity despite the fact that some of the key issues that he did run on haven't really been addressed at this point. Um, but the Senate seat now with um, Governor Bush deciding not to run, um, that's going to be, uh, I think, the key Democratic contenders I would think would be more likely to uh, be eyeing that seat right now. Um, and certainly the DSCC, um, I'm sure, would be coming in with resources given their positioning right now to, uh, to be able to support the Democratic nominee here in a way that we may not have seen in previous um, elections. Because, well, as you know, Florida is such an incredibly expensive state to run a really competitive campaign. So, um, but I think that the Democrats nationally will be eyeing the seat as one that's a potential pickup this time. We're almost out of time, so would you do us a favor that when you get to the inauguration, will you put some gaffer's tape on the back of you that says, Hi, Tampa, so we can, <laughs> so we can pick fun. you out? <laughs> Just wave. Hey, it's good talking to you folks, and thank you for stopping Thank by. you very much. Really appreciate thank it. you. Thanks.